Hi, how you guys doing out there? I am Sheila L. Brown. I am the owner of WUFO Radio Station, and now we are in the process of producing the Barrington Brown movie. We have already written the Barrington Brown story, and now it's time to get the movie out there to show how good God has been with the miracles he has done with our son. So on March 8th, 2020, my husband, Kenneth A. Brown, received a phone call from our twin son, Blaine. And he said, Barrington had been in a car accident. So Kenny said, Sheila, Barrington's been in a car accident. So a, a mother, you know, we're not thinking a serious car accident. I'm thinking a little fender bender. I'm like, oh, okay, B Blaine will, you know, get to the hospital and see what's going on. Blaine passes the car on the expressway and all this is happening in Atlanta, Georgia. So Blaine passes the car, he calls back, he said, Dad, it's no way Barrington is alive. So immediately, as a mother, I switch my way of praying to the Lord. Automatically, I say, God, you said our children was mighty upon this earth. How is anything going to happen to Barrington and he's not here? So I said to Blaine, hurry up and get your mm, to Grady Hospital and find out what's going on with Barrington. So he gets to Grady, so by this time, I'm calling everybody, we're praying, we're hoping, we're, we're talking to God, I'm calling my pastor up. He was actually on the road, and I said, Pastor, look, we gotta pray, something's going on with Barrington. So Blaine gets there, um, they have him downstairs, it's not in an ICU, it's in front of a morgue, downstairs in Grady Hospital. His girlfriend was in the car with her. I said, give me Anita's phone number. I get on the phone with Anita. First question I ask her is, I'm gonna ask you one question. Is Barrington coherent? She said, no ma'am. So I knew right away it was time for me to cook, kick in the gear as a mother. You know, people always have that cliche, I'm up for the assignment. So I knew when I gave birth to my children that I was a mother. I wasn't your sister, I, I wasn't your playmate, I was a mother from the time I birthed my children. So I knew I had to kick in the gear in a whole different way of a ram to save my son. And by the time the next morning when I got to Atlanta and I walked into his hospital room, um, the, average, the average person seeing that sight, you probably would have let them pull the plug because that was the next question. Like, you know, you might as well pull the plug because um, the site that Barrington is in, he'll always be a vegetable. He's not breathing on his own. Everything is happening with him right now in the machine. And I immediately, as a mother said, no, that's not the promises of God. God promises our children will be mighty upon this earth and how is Barrington gonna be mighty and he's not here. So the next question they asked me, do you have insurance? So of course we do. My husband has the best insurance. He works for the city of Buffalo. And I said, yes, we do. But in the same time as a mother, I'm thinking, what about people who don't have insurance? What would have happened to my son if we didn't have insurance? I was already, um, a two-time author and I knew the importance of, um, you know, always writing down, documenting, seeing what's going on. It was so many moving parts um, to Barrington. So, you know, I started writing. Actually, uh, a good friend of mine, my sister friend, Donna Brown, she had a girl named Mandy that lived in Atlanta bring me up a journal and she said, write it all down. And so uh, that was my book where I wrote everything. It didn't matter if it was the room number, if it was the uh, number to get into the waiting room, you know, cause it was like a passcode. So that was my book for everything. So from the day I walked in there on March 9th uh, at 8.37 in AM, I started writing everything down, taking pictures of Barrington and writing everything down. What nurse was in there, the medicine, because you know, all the vocabulary that they were using, you know, I'm not a doctor, far from it, medical, far from it. So I'm like, okay, I need to see what they're talking about. I need to see this medicine. And the good part about it is, um, with him going to Morehouse, the whole Morehouse team of medicine was there. 
So they were kind of educating me. So every day from March 9th all the way, I just documented his whole story. And I was in the airport actually one day and I was on the phone, you know, because all day, every day, people calling me, texting me, praying. So I was on the phone with a young lady named Paulette Harris. And we're on the phone. I'm like, Paulette, I got the um, book is done. We're on our way to public. I said, you know what's next? I said, God, I already dropped in my spirit. I'm going to do a movie. She said, yes, yes, that's it. You do a movie on this. We got to let the world know that God is still, you know, amazingly um, healing people of color. Because we see a lot of books and a lot of movies where God has made miracles happen, but not too many of young black boys. And so it was important for me to showcase what God has done uh, for um, young black boys, but not only that, but to showcase that having insurance is important, to showcase having students in college. This just wasn't an average little black boy riding in a car. He had a future in front of him that God had assigned for him. And then at the same time, want to showcase the police department because so many times the police department gets a black eye. This was one where Atlanta had really did an amazing job. And then Grady Hospital, because if, if it wasn't for the trauma unit at Grady Hospital, I don't know if I would be able to sit here and have the same story. And then with Emory Rehab, when he entered into Emory Rehab, he couldn't write, he couldn't talk, he couldn't walk, he couldn't eat on his own. He couldn't do the smallest thing of using the bathroom and wiping your own self. So when I tell you God has been amazingly wonderful with the team that he has put around me, and then once I got with Black Rose Production and I explained to Corey exactly what I wanted to do as far as writing the movie, immediately he started working on the script. We got an amazing script done. Then he said, okay, we got to put another eye on it. We were able to get Addison Henderson in. He was able to put another part to the movie. So now we are ready to get the screenplay and really take this where not only our family could be blessed by the outcome, but the world can know if you put all your cares into the Holy Spirit, into the Lord, you'll get the same outcome.